you. We thank you for joining with us. We pray that you got a list of a bunch of reasons of why you're thankful. Yes. But even if God doesn't do another thing, even if God doesn't give you everything on your wish list, he's already deserving of praise. Already deserving of your, of your worship, which you bow with us. Father, we thank you again for this privilege to gather in your name, to make much of you, to tell you thank you, to tell you how much we love you, how much we are in awe of you. Father, we adore you. But Father, we thank you even more for how you adore us, for how you make a fuss over us. Father, we thank you for this time. We pray that you would fill it with your presence. Father, have your way. Help somebody tonight. Make us better. Okay? Help us to leave this place. Leave this session better than we can. It's in Jesus' name we pray. And then every heart said, Amen. Amen. Receive our praise today. Amen. 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 We had a wonderful time. And we want to give God a great praise and a great thanksgiving as we prepare to celebrate this week. We want to just tell God how much we love Him and how much we appreciate Him. I was thinking the other day about the joy that came my way. It took away a wrong and the things that had me bound. I thought 
web page and uh, paying there or visiting uh, the app called Tidely and finding us there. Uh, those are ways you can do it. Uh, or you can set us up uh, on your, uh, if you personally bank online, you can set us up as a payee online and whenever you want to send a contribution, you can just go into your online banking and send it that way and it won't cost you uh, or the church a fee. It'll be absolutely free. So those are just ways that you can uh, sow into the ministry and to the work of God. Um, I am um, always grateful um, that God loves us the way he does. Uh, I'm so glad that um, we don't have to perform for God so that he does good for us. Uh, but he just is good to us. That's why we love him like we do. Um, because we, we are loved. And there's just liberty in knowing that you're loved uh, and, and knowing that you're not trying to figure out um, where you fit in uh, to God's schedule, like where you fit into God's plan or his agenda. Um, but you know that you are special and important to God. Our value, our worth uh, comes from God, not what we can offer God or anybody else, um, but we're already deeply loved and highly favored Amen. by the Father. Amen. Uh, we pray that you have a wonderful uh, Thanksgiving day. Uh, the days leading up to it, I pray they are wonderful, and those even after it, we pray, are wonderful. Amen. We pray that you aren't too caught up in just that one day. Amen. 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 Don't forget how many other days the Lord has kept you. Amen. 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 So we encourage you to be thankful uh, the days leading up and uh, even beyond and on uh, that day slighted, slated on calendar for Thanksgiving. On tonight, uh, we continue uh, our time together in the book of James. In the book of James. James chapter 1. Uh, James chapter 1. Uh, last week, uh, we stopped, uh, I believe, at verse 8, uh, where we were talking about uh, the person um, that was asking God something, but was asking God not in faith. And the Word of God says about that individual, uh, that that individual is double-minded and unstable in all uh, of their ways. And um, it's interesting um, that faith or the lack thereof has a way of either enabling us to be stable in every situation or unstable in every situation. And um, James is saying, if somebody lacks wisdom, just ask God. Just, just ask God and he, he'll give it to you. He, he'll, he'll give it to you. In fact, I am a living witness uh, that he'll absolutely give it to you. So on tonight, we begin at verse 9. Verse 9. Chapter 1, verse 9. And I'm going to read uh, verse 9, 10, and 11 uh, together. And we'll uh, try to flesh out what James is saying, what God is saying to us through uh, the writer here, James. So verse 9 uh, reads this way, but the brother uh, or the person of humble circumstances. And matter of fact, let me, let me just stop. Um, there is this, this push, um, this, this movement um, towards feminism. Um, let me say, um, anything that causes the believers of bo the body of Christ to be separated, to be placed in boxes, is not a work of God. God is not of division. And so I find myself oftentimes trying to fight back against that and, and in the Bible where it says he I try to say if it's not specifically talking about male I try to say uh, a non uh, gender specific word um, but can we just for the sake of clarity right can I just read it how it shows up yeah. amen and if you're unclear if it's talking about gender a specific gender um, we can talk about it, um, but I think it's I think it's pretty clear um, that uh, as we specifically in the text on tonight, uh, it'll say man or it'll say brother. Um, it's not specifically, uh, although uh, the word for brother uh, it, it, in the Greek uh, 
cannot be confused with the word for sister. Um, this is applicable whether it's a brother or a sister. Can I say it that way? And so, and so just for uh, clarity, uh, let me just read it, uh, how it shows up in the text. All right. Amen. And I'm not favoring men over women or women over men. We, we, we need each other. As a matter of fact, uh, when God made, uh, created Adam, uh, he looked at him and said, it's not good that he should be alone. And he gave him a woman. And I happen to absolutely agree. It's not good for a man to be alone. And uh, God's uh, answer was not uh, creating a dog. Amen, guys. Your dog is not your best friend. Right. Amen, lights. Although we saw a man jump in the jump in the water to save his dog from an alligator, <laughs> <laughs> the dog was not created to be to be your best friend. Amen. So we we agree with what God has already established. Like it's settled. Like one's not better than the other. Like, like we're good together. Amen. And I think even as we look around our community, we can, we can tell um, where the breakdown of the family, of the nuclear, of the God-designed family, like, let me not even say nuclear, I don't even know what that means, but as the God-designed family, we can see that that was God's idea, that was God's design. And whatever God designs, that is the best way, right? Now, I'm not saying those who come from single parent households are less than. That is not, I'm gonna touch, touch somebody sitting next to you that's getting uneasy and say that's not what he's talking about. In fact, pastor came from a single parent household. But do you know, regardless of our experiences, that's not God's, that wasn't God's idea. There are some things God allows, but that ain't God's idea. Matter of fact, you may have to think long, just think about back to some of your exes. Huh? Talk to, don't get quiet. Just think back to some of your exes. Think, think back to some of the bonehead decisions you made that God didn't stop you in the middle of. Uh -huh. Amen. So let me, but y'all just let me talk about what I'm talking about tonight. Amen. <laughs> Verse 9 says, but the brother of humble circumstances is to glory in his high position and the rich man is to glory in his humiliation because like flowering grass, he will pass away. For the sun rises with a scorching wind and withers the grass and its flower falls off and the beauty of its appearance is destroyed. So to the rich man in the midst of his pursuits will fade away. James says to the brother of humble circumstances, you are to glory in your high position. James has to be talking to a believer because <laughs> it doesn't make sense any other kind of way, right? Like it doesn't make sense by this, by the world's standards to glory in having humble circumstances or having poor circumstances. But what James is saying and the, the greater truth, the larger truth uh, that James fleshes out that I think you can find a clear thread throughout the Bible uh, that there is a special place in God's heart uh, for the underdog or for the for those considered less than or for, for the poor. Like there, there's a, a neat thread throughout the whole Bible in terms of how God uh, is, is for uh, those that are meek, is for those that are humble. And so here, uh, James is saying to the person that finds themselves in humble circumstances that you are to glory in your high position. And the, the rich person is to glory in your humili humiliation because like flowering grass he will pass away. It almost looks like James got these verses confused. Like James, you, 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 you gave good advice but you gave it to the wrong people. Like just, just switch that around and it'll be right. But what James is trying to help uh, them and us understand is those who find themselves um, poor 
uh, should not have a cantankerous spirit, should not be uh, always angry or agitated, um, but should be thankful to God, uh, not necessarily because you're poor, but because it won't always be like that. The poor don't really have to um, think hard about their need for somebody to save them, somebody to provide for them. Because many times they literally need for somebody to provide for them. So, so it's, it's easy for them not to put too much stock in themselves or what they have. The rich, on the other hand, because they have a lot, sometimes it's difficult to comprehend a need that you cannot meet. Many of us, many, uh, uh, many of us have uh, watched um, the movie. Uh, I think it was called Deeds or Good Deeds, a Tyler Perry movie. And um, in the movie, uh, you don't have to you don't have to watch it to, to, to understand what I'm about to say. Uh, but in the movie, Deeds, uh, he's rich, doesn't really have to worry about much. And there's a scene there uh, where they, there's this young lady who is really poor and has uh, humble circumstances, and they're having a conversation. And she says to him, you don't even know how much milk costs. Tell me how much a gallon of milk costs. And because he doesn't have to worry about the cost of milk, he, he doesn't know how much it costs. And the rich person don't necessarily, necessarily have, to, have to wonder about like, their source of sustenance because they can already figure out and fathom where it's coming from. And so there, there is this temptation for the rich to trust in their riches uh, rather than trust in God. And it's a temptation that the poor do not have because they can only trust in God. And so, and so the writer uh, here is saying, hey, listen, uh, both of you all uh, have something uh, to, to be proud about, to boast about, but none of it is in yourself. The poor, don't you boast um, or, or, or don't you be upset, cantankerous about the possessions you don't have. Boast and be glad that you find it uh, a little more easy not to be tempted to trust in yourself, but to trust in God. And the rich, boast in your humiliation. In other words, he's saying, humble yourself. Come, 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 take it, bring it down a notch or two. Um, because the truth is, uh, as the text goes, goes on to say, um, verse 10, uh, and the rich man is, is to glory in his humiliation because like flowering grass, he will pass away for the sun rises with a scorching wind and withers the grass and his flower falls off and the beauty of its appearance is destroyed. So too the rich man in the midst of his pursuits will fade away. Um, one, of the, one of the things um, that is the great equalizer is death. Amen. Yeah. Whether you're poor or rich, uh, unless, unless you hang around here until the Lord returns, all of us will die. Okay. Whether you're poor or rich, like death, death doesn't, doesn't ask you uh, your net worth when, he, when death shows up. Uh, death visits the poor and the rich alike. And death is a great equalizer because I don't care how much money or wealth uh, you had in the world, you can't take it with you. Right. Care what kind of houses or fine clothes uh, you were accustomed to while you were alive. You, we take none of that with us when we die. Yeah. In fact, we won't even, we won't even need it. Right? right? So, 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 so James is really trying to help them to live beyond today. He's trying to push all of us to have an eternal perspective. And he's saying to the poor, hey, listen, just, just be glad that it won't always be like this. That there, there will be a day where things will be better. Now, this has nothing to do about uh, not striving or not uh, being imaginative, trying to better or improve your situation. Amen. James is not trying to demotivate anybody from working. Amen. Amen. Let's get this straight off top. 
Amen. It's healthy to work. It's godly to work. Amen. And so James is not trying to demotivate anybody from working and from being uh, enterprising. Amen. Amen. The more you have, the more you can give away. The more you have, the more you can help others. Amen. Amen. So he's not trying to demotivate anybody, but he's trying to help them to understand, uh, to look at things with a long view. So the poor won't get too low, too frustrated, or even begin um, desiring things that God doesn't necessarily want them to have. Wow. Let me, let me, let me take that back. God does not mind us having material things. Yeah, let me, let me not get that confused by any stretch of the imagination. Um, God does not want materials to have us. He, he, he does not want that. And so, in this text, James is saying, death is a great equalizer. When you die, if you're in the Lord, how much money you have won't determine if you go to heaven or determine if you go to hell. Yes. If you have a shack when you die, does not mean you'll have a shack when you see the Lord. Amen. Amen. Yeah. If you have a mansion before you die, does not mean you have a mansion in heaven. Amen. Preacher, what about that funeral text that everybody here at funerals but well, God says in my father's house are many mansions. That ain't talking about houses. Yeah, it, it ain't talking about houses. It's, it's pointing to something. It, it's, it's using mansions. It's, it's using houses to point to something even better than houses. It's pointing to having a place to belong. Amen. So, so it has nothing to do with us having a big house when we get to heaven. Um, so James is trying, uh, is writing so that the poor and the rich alike, uh, that both of their hope is in God. Their pursuits, their motivation is not simply to pursue things, not simply to pursue prestige, but to follow after God's plan for their life. Um, verse 11 says, For the sun rises with the scorching wind and withers the grass, and this flower falls off. How many accolades you've accumulated, how, how well folk like you here, you can't take that with you. Amen. There won't be reserved seating for us in heaven. There won't be a velvet rope in heaven. Right. Amen. Amen. We will be rewarded based on our service to the Lord, yes, right. not based on our bank statement. Yes. Amen. 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 So the rich and the poor alike would glory in that. Yes. Verse 12 uh, goes on to say, and it sounds like it kind of picks up the thought uh, that James starts with. Um, he says, blessed is a man who perseveres under trial, for once he has been approved, he will receive the crown of life which the Lord has promised to those who love him. Blessed is a man who perseveres under trial. For once he has been approved, he will receive the crown of life which the Lord has promised to those who love him. Blessed is a man who perseveres under trial. If you want to be blessed, when trials come, you and I need to persevere. Amen. But then we, we have to consider what else this, 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 this verse says. It says, for once he has been approved, he will receive the crown of life. Um, that's not a better job. That's not a bigger house. It's not a sexier boo. Um, it's the crown of life. It is eternal life, uh, which the Lord has promised to those who work hard. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. You know what y'all Bible say? He promises all who work hard. Yeah. 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 
Verse 12, he in that way? Has promised to those who love him. Yeah. He, he has promised to those who love him. And so here, here uh, the blessedness uh, happens not necessarily in the moment. Not necessarily on this side of glory. That this blessedness is not anything we can identify on this side. Now, 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 there are blessings that we can absolutely identify on this side. The crown of life is not necessarily one of those things that we can identify on this side. We, we, we hope for, we, we, we long for that day, but we can't rightly recognize it here. And so the writer James here is saying, blessed is the one who perseveres under trial. And there really could be an S on the end of that. Um, but it has the perspective that you have to endure and keep persevering yeah, yeah. until the Lord says it is enough. Yes. I think I've said it before. We, we won't weasel and cry and snot our way out of something that God is developing us in. Yes. Yes. We'll come out when he's ready. But the text says, blessed is a man who perseveres under trial, and once he has been approved, he will receive the crown of life. The fact that, the fact that one has been approved is proof, or the proof shows up in the fact that they persevere. Not that you, not, not that this individual man does it perfectly. This, this, this is not talking about somebody who is sinless because none of us will be sinless or without sin. Um, but the one who perseveres, the one who continues, the one who does not give up, the one who does not throw in the towel, the one who does not walk away from God, the one who does not resign themselves to follow after another way because the writer of Hebrews just told us that Jesus is the best way. So when trials show up, the blessed person will persevere. Yes. Amen. Won't be too high, won't be too low. Yes. But know that it won't always be this way. Amen. And it's really the Lord who gives the crown of life. That's why our, our aim, our, our pursuit and what has our heart should not be primarily what other folk think about us. Amen. Amen. But all too often it's true that the primary thing is what folk think about us. And you can tell it by our disposition if folk like or don't like our social media posts. And let me let me see how many folk like them. Uh, not that many. Now we say, oh, they like me. We like. Nah. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Our, our, our primary motivator ought not be to try and get followers or fans for the sake of them following us. But if we're going to pursue followers, we need to be pointing them to Jesus. Making much of his name, not, not, not our name. But what does it mean to have a million followers or 15 followers and they are following you somewhere that doesn't satisfy? But, but what does it profit an individual? Though they would gain the whole world and lose their soul. Nothing. It, it, it does not prosper. Uh, that individual. Um, so, so this text helps us to understand. Now, we have to remember that James is talking to people who are persecuted, who are experiencing trials, right? He, he, he's, he's, he's talking to people who know trouble. And I got this thing suspicious. Some of y'all know trouble. Y'all know trials. The fact that you're still here, that you're still alive, that you know what day it is. Is a testimony to the fact that you are persevering. Yes. And the only reason you're persevering is because God's holding you up. Amen. The only reason you have strength today is because you 
have come to understand that God's strength is made perfect in our weakness. And so sometimes you and I, you and I get like Paul and say, I'd rather glory in my weaknesses that the power of God may be manifested, that, that people will stop looking at me and come to discover that has to be something on the inside of that person for them not to have given up, for them not to have gone off, for them to still be praising God. There has to be something there that's deeper than the world provides. You know what it is? It's just Jesus. It, it's just, it's, it's all God. It, it, it's all God. So James says, um, that person is blessed. What do you mean? The person undergoing trials is blessed? Hmm. Because we, we look at blessed as being without trials. If you're blessed, that means you don't have trials. You don't have worries. You don't, you don't have things that concern you. But all of us know that ain't right. Somebody say that ain't right. <laughs> right? Because, because some of us, if we're honest, we wouldn't pray like we do if we didn't have some trouble. We, we wouldn't seek God like we do if we didn't have some trials, if we didn't have some problems. So blessedness is not, does not uh, mean that people don't have trials, don't have situations, don't have to cry sometimes. But just know that in the process, and in, in the meanwhile, though you don't feel like it, you don't look like it, the writer here says, you're blessed oh, yes. as you persevere. And the only reason you can persevere is because you, you've been approved. Yeah. And you will receive the crown of life, which the Lord has promised to those who love him. Which means there's not one circumstance, there's not one thing you can go through, nothing that can attack you on this side that would disqualify you for what God has for you in that great getting up day. Man, I am so glad that folk can't, can't steal what God has for me. Ain't no whiteout, no magic marker. Um, nothing to remove the believer's name from the Lamb's book of life. There's, there's nothing that will separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus. Verse 13 then says, Let no one say when he is tempted, I am being tempted by God. For God cannot be tempted by evil, and he himself does not tempt anyone. Now there is a difference the art in, in between the words the authors the authors use in between trials and tempting. That's right. Amen. Whatever God allows trials or tests to come our way, He's not He's not tempting us to sin or to do evil. No. Temptation comes in to cause one to do evil, to cause one to sin. God is not causing anybody to sin. He, he's not. If, if, if you're ever confused and you're thinking about sinning, that ain't God telling you to do that. Yeah, it, it ain't God. That, that's not God. I don't care how you pray. Uh, if you come away with from praying uh, that God wants you to sin, God doesn't want you to sin. Not because I said it, but because the Bible says it, let no one say when, when they are tempted, when he or she is tempted, that I am being tempted by God. For God cannot be tempted by evil, and he himself does not tempt anyone. Now, the reason God cannot be tempted by evil, because there is not an evil part of him. He, he, he's good through and through. He, he's holy and altogether lovely through and through. There, there, he, there, there, there's no darkness in him. He, 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 he's only that there is, there is no variableness, there's no shades of gray in him, there's only light in him, and so he cannot be tempted uh, by evil, and nor does he himself tempt anyone. Amen. 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 I feel like preaching, but my timer is telling me a time for me to stop, so we'll, we'll put a pencil there. Um, but may you be encouraged. 
Um, that whether you find yourself comfortable uh, certain by circumstances or find yourself uncomfortable, um, there's there's reason for you to rejoice and to look up. Yeah. Uh, God's not expecting any of us to place hope in our own selves. In fact, as we continue in the book of James, we'll see uh, what happens when we follow our own desires and what we what happens when we follow our own wishes. Uh, God doesn't tempt us, but it's us that tempts us. There's, there's something in us that responds to the temptation. And so we pray that you will join us uh, next time we gather uh, as we talk about that. Uh, we pray that as you gather uh, this week with uh, loved ones that you would uh, be safe, um, that you would uh, think about somebody else, that you would uh, look for ways to be a blessing to somebody else. Um, so if, if, if you got a lot, share with somebody who done. Amen. So that it would be said among us that uh, those who, who had much and those who had little, nobody had too much, nobody had too little. Uh, let us be uh, ambassadors of God's goodness. Let us uh, give somebody who thought they uh, wouldn't have a good Thanksgiving reason uh, to look to God and tell them thank you. Um, Father, we thank you again for how you love us, uh, for how you um, refocus our mind, for how you, 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 you give us a, a different perspective. Um, Father, we pray that you would give us a better understanding of your way and of the way the kingdom operates. Father, we pray for a kingdom mindset so that we won't be so consumed with how this world functions. Uh, but in the midst of how this world functions as we pass through, we pray, God, that you would help us to point others to you uh, so that all of us uh, will know that there is a reality uh, beyond here, beyond earth. And so, Father, we pray that you would help us to make proper preparations and help others to make proper preparations for the time beyond today. Father, we pray for uh, the unsaved that may be watching viewing with us on tonight, Lord. We pray, God, that you would save them, that you would help them to know that their trust doesn't need to be in their own self, but it needs to be placed in you. Father, we pray that you would help them to make a faith confession that they will confess Jesus Christ as Lord with their mouth and believe in their heart that God has raised Jesus from the dead so that they might be saved. Father, we pray that you would just uh, hug and just uh, so encapsulate the believer uh, to know that we're loved and valued by you. And Father, we pray that we would in turn do the same uh, for others and point them to uh, the greater love that's only found in Jesus Christ. Father, we love you. We thank you. We bless your name. We pray for your strength. We pray for your shalom. We pray, God, for the sick among us that you would strengthen. Uh, for those who lost loved ones, that you would comfort and keep them. Uh, for those battling depressive thoughts, Father, that you would help them through this. For those who need wisdom, that they would ask you, oh God. Father, we love you. We thank you. And we bless your name. Have your way. It's in Jesus' name we pray. And every heart said amen. God bless you. Have a wonderful day and a wonderful week.